This is the update for tag runtime. And uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, so my name is Steve Rust. I'm a principal architect at Akamai, um, working on all things cloud native. Hi, I'm Danielle Tal. I'm uh, working at Microsoft on Flatcar. Um, I'm also co-chair of Tag Runtime. Hi, I'm Rajus. I work at Broadcom, doing all things Kubernetes there, and I'm a, one of the tech leads for Tag Runtime. Hello, I'm Ricardo. I'm one of the co-chairs co for Tag Runtime. I'm also one of the leads for the Cloud Native AI Working Group, and I work at Snowflake. Awesome. So, a uh, quick agenda today. We'll do an intro and kind of an overview of what uh, runtime is, and then go into some of the recent activities and updates for uh, projects, as well as uh, a lot of the working groups, and hopefully uh, encourage you to get involved. So as a quick intro before we get into what runtime is, uh, we wanted to describe what even is a tag at all. Um, so a tag is a technical advisory group. And the point is to really scale contributions from the community uh, as well as help the, the TOC. So when you saw just in, in the keynote, the scary landscape, you know, when you talk about scale, there's thousands of projects and there's really 11 TOC members. So there's no way they can be domain experts in uh, everything. And that's where the, the tags come in. So, What's interesting is from the previous slide, every one of those projects falls into the scope of one of the tags. There are currently eight of those today, and they could fall into multiple as well. Uh, but the tag will work to uh, work with the projects and advise those projects and also work with the TOC to uh, provide feedback and recommendations. So these are the current eight uh, tags that we have um, within the CNCF. Uh, today's obviously runtime. We have the largest logo on the slide today because it's our talk. And so what does a really a tag do, right? We reach out to projects, uh, engaging with those communities, and we're often the first point of contact for a project within the CNCF. So as they're going for sandbox or through incubation and on to graduation, the tag is there every step of the way. Um, working with the project, giving them a forum for presentations, as well as engagement. Uh, one of the new initiatives is the domain technical review. You just heard Karena talk about in this keynote as well. And this is really formalizing the process of the project review across tags. So it's not each tag inventing their own thing. It's really standardizing that and providing questions and guidelines. Tags also organize uh, white papers as needed for specific initiatives uh, and establish working groups around um, special projects or needs in the community within the scope. And everything we do is public. So that's the tag uh, as far as specifically about runtime. Runtime is all about execution and um, workloads, orchestration, um, and as well as more specialized things around operating systems and sandboxing and so forth. So some of the key areas for runtime, obviously runtime, workload orchestration, things like serverless, edge, uh, even into AI, the runtime is the current home for the AI working group, as well as specialized OS and architectures and sandboxing. So these are some of the projects um, in scope of runtime. Uh, a lot of familiar faces here. You'll notice even Kubernetes itself was originally a runtime project, uh, fairly mature these days. Um, but uh, we wanted to also special call out to uh, the graduated project CubeEdge, as well as the newly incubating Flatcar and Wasm Cloud all under the runtime run scope. Uh, and these are just a little bit more detail about the different scopes that we have and some of the projects in that area. So all of WebAssembly, um, orchestration, runtime, and so forth, um, special operating systems like Immutable OS, like Flatcar, as we mentioned, uh, and the specific AI projects as well. And runtime has six working groups today. So 
a tag doesn't necessarily have uh, to have working groups, but a lot of our communities have built up around these uh, areas. So AI, WebAssembly, we mentioned um, container orchestrated devices, and we'll get into all the specifics of these uh, in the next few slides. So this is who we are. We just introduced uh, some of us here today. We work with the TOC liaisons in runtime um, for all of our efforts, and we hold public meetings. Um, so pl please uh, come if you're interested in any of these topics, and we'll have some QR codes later as well uh, in the slides. So uh, we've mentioned domain technical review. Wanted to quickly overview what is a DTR. So again, this is really a framework for engaging with projects, uh, providing guidance for presentations on what they uh, would want to come to a tag or the community, um, as well as help them understand the different levels from what it, what it means to be sandbox incubation and graduation, um, and really how they work through that. So there'll be specific questions and guidelines for each uh, step of the process. And uh, we've kind of formalized the ability to uh, have the tag review and provide these reviews, as well as give an opportunity for the project to respond um, and uh, give them that forum for, for their, their input there. So this is a this is fairly new um, kind of formalized process that we have done since uh, KubeCon uh, in Paris uh, until today. All right, I'll pass it over to Ricardo to start the next section. I'll talk a little bit about the project presentations that we've had over the years in Tag Runtime. So as you can see, um, lots of logos around the different areas of, uh, the, that are within the scope of Tag Runtime. We've had a few in, in the last maybe six months related to AI because there's been a lot of hype around that. So, so some of the examples are Cubray, Case GPT, Skypilot, Kato, and Hami. So uh, lots of activity, encourage everyone to join, to uh, engage with projects. And, and you know, if, you, if you're familiar with one of these, you know, they can also come back and present. So one uh, highlight here is that we had the CubeEdge presentation for graduation. Uh, so, so we had that on May 2nd this year. And it was officially announced uh, on October 15th. Uh, so congratulations to CubeEdge. CubeEdge is a project that allows you to run uh, cloud-native workloads uh, at the edge uh, in, in uh, using Kubernetes you know, as a way to orchestrate uh, the workloads. And another highlight here is uh, Flatcar. Uh, we had a presentation on March 3rd. Uh, they're applying for incubation, and congratulations to you. They, they uh, were admitted into incubation in, in September 2024. And just to give you a background, uh, Flat Car is a special purpose operating system, very minimal operating system. Uh, it came from the folks, uh, initially from the folks at CoreOS, and so uh, it was meant primarily to run containers, but it, it it, it helps organizations uh, just focus on this immutable way of operating systems that uh, you know makes uh, security uh, more stable and, and so, so, so it's so minimal that that you don't have a lot of different components that can be compromised by by vulnerabilities for example another highlight uh, we have uh, wasn't cloud uh, uh, also presented in June 15th, uh, incubation was announced on November 8th, uh, very recently. Uh, so Wasm Cloud allows you to orchestrate uh, cl cloud-native workloads using WebAssembly modules uh, in an efficient way, so you can run these ac across multiple places and, and, and allows you to connect all of them together uh, to run something like a, like a system around you know, a queuing system or, or, or querying databases or doing anything related to cloud native that, that you would normally do with applications and say running on top of Kubernetes. Uh, <coughs> QBraid is another project that came in and presented uh, uh, 
obviously AI is uh, very relevant now, and, and Ray is a, is a project that allows you to train machine learning models, to run scoring jobs, to run batch inference. Uh, and QRay specifically is a subset of, of a, a array that allows you to run Ray on top of Kubernetes. Uh, so something very relevant now. Um, uh, and I, I, I hope to see more of this uh, in the future. I think uh, Kubernetes is not yet in the CNCF, but this is something that we're trying to, you know, help out uh, well, this pro this project navigate the ecosystem so they can actually join the CNCF and, and and get the benefits of having a vendor neutral home, and they can they can foster uh, communities and, and continue to grow. Okay, thank you. Um, so moving on to uh, some deep dives on some updates for the working groups. Uh, again, just a refresher, um, six different working groups, and we'll go through each of those uh, and provide some updates. So pass it over to Rajas for the Cloud Native AI. Yeah, uh, this working group started as part of a collaboration between Tag Runtime and Tag Observability. Um, one of the things that came out of this working group was a white paper on all things Cloud Native and AI. We released it in KubeCon Paris. Um, it talks about challenges of running cloud native or AI workloads on cloud native infrastructure, what are possible remediations, what is meant by uh, the integration of cloud native um, and AI, uh, and things like that. So give it a read. This has been like one of the uh, first deliverables of this working group. The other thing that we got done was a landscape for um, cloud native AI in the CNCF landscape. So if you go to landscape.cncf.io, you get a CNAI uh, tab over there. So that was another deliverable that came out of this. This working group has been uh, pretty much agile and active around uh, things happening all, uh, all around all things cloud native and AI. So we also got a logo for it. So this was the new logo that was announced recently. And um, what we did was created a sub, uh, repository under CNC, uh, called CNCF uh, tags, wherein you can play around with some projects related to cloud native infrastructure and AI. So here's uh, a CNCF YouTube channel summarizer, which basically you know summarizes all of the transcripts using some LLM and things like that. So that was like another cool thing that came out of this working group as well. The energy has been great. A lot of people are hacking on a lot of things and coming up with like uh, a bunch of new initiatives over here. These are some other initiatives. We've got uh, sustainable AI in cloud native environments white paper, which folks are working on. So if you are interested in this intersection of uh, sustainability and what, what it means for artificial intelligent workloads, this is an area where you can um, help collaborate. What is meant by uh, cloud native AI security? So there's another workload. Uh, there's, there's another white paper coming up for that. Uh, what is meant by AI scheduling? So yet another work, uh, white paper coming up for that. Uh, the other thing is the data on Kubernetes released a report, and that has a specific uh, mention of this working group and in general cloud native AI workloads. So they re uh, released it this week. And uh, that has been pretty interesting as well. Yet another initiative that we've been working on is an AI playground wherein people can play around deploying AI workloads, maybe rack pipelines, vector databases, you name it, on cloud native infrastructure. And this will be like a self-hosted platform where you, you know you can just come out, like you know, try things out and see how that works out, get some reference architecture designs, some ideas around that, uh, and try to solve uh, challenges which are faced by almost everyone who's trying to run all of these workloads. So that's another thing that's kind of brewing in this working group. Uh, it's not out there yet, but if this is something that resonates with you, then be sure to go to this QR code and then you know uh, show your support on that GitHub issue. Um, apart from that, we meet every second and fourth Friday of every month at 8 a.m. PST. Um, what we're looking for is to like outreach to more projects which are in this space. So if you want to help out, you know, please join the meetings and you know help out with this working group. Like just dive in, show up on the Slack channel. It's WG Artificial Intelligence on CNCF Slack, and let's have fun there. Yep. 
over and, to you. And there's something like 400 members of that Slack channel in I like know, six right. months or something. I right? know, right? Like the velocity has been insane. I think it's uh, over 500 now. 500, 500 wow, yeah. out of date. Um, so next, uh, brief uh, discussion of the WebAssembly working group. Um, so this working group works uh, across companies uh, with um, kind of aligned with the Bytecode Alliance. So they have done a lot of tooling um, around um, uh, the new uh, OCI uh, WASM support um, for the OCI artifacts. So that's a new standard that has come out of, uh, helped come out of uh, this working group. And uh, you can see it's been implemented across um, a lot of common tools, ContainerD, uh, Spin, and so forth. Uh, and then the WASM cloud as well that we mentioned. Um, so again, this working group is uh, very active as well, continuing to work across standardizations um, through uh, W3C and WASI cloud. Uh, I linked a couple fixes here uh, that they have worked um, updating those specs uh, in, in recent time. Um, and, and this has really been uh, a, a good example of them working with uh, open source communities. So this working group, uh, WASM working group, has community meetings as well. Um, and the uh, active chairs and tech leads. So it's, a, again, interesting structure within the tag. The tag itself um, has chairs and leads, but each working group really operates uh, within the tag, but has an in independent structure as well for their um, uh, uh, their uh, agility and ability to kind of operate. Um, so please uh, check out uh, the Slack channel uh, or uh, go to one of their meetings. Next working group, uh, Batch System Initiative. Uh, so you, you might have seen the demo with Q in the uh, first keynote on Wednesday from Ricardo Rocha. Q is uh, under the Batch System Initiative working group here um, and really interested in all types of batch processing um, and uh, really a lot of the, uh, the items listed there. Uh, they have completed the landscape similar to the uh, Cloud Native AI landscape uh, and have been able to identify these projects uh, that fit in here. And again, um, community engagement uh, operating as a separate working group with chairs. Uh, please go to one of their meetings if this type of workload, orchestration, and execution is interesting to you. Uh, Ricardo, do you want to? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, another working group that we have is the Container Orchestrated Devices Working Group. Uh, this is one of our first working groups. Uh, and they are working on a standardization of the way we define devices in containers. Uh, so when you specify like a GPU or, or a network device, so working around those different standards. And uh, this is an example that, you know, that some of the things that they were working on and uh, this became the foundation of what the dynamic resource allocation is in Kubernetes. Uh, you've probably seen some other talks here at KubeCon that talk about how to allocate uh, GPUs in a more efficient way. So a lot of this started in this working group. And they also have uh, community meetings. So every other Tuesday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And they also have a chair. So I um, encourage everyone who wants to work on at the device level, defining containers uh, uh, or how they talk to devices and uh, how uh, you can if more efficiently use things like GPUs or, or, or things that are very relevant now that for AI type of things uh, that inter interact at the low level uh, places in, in the operating system and <coughs> the, the hardware itself uh, join these meetings. Uh, the, another working group that we have is the IoT Edge working group, uh, and this group, uh, you know, focuses on engaging with different projects related to the Edge, like K3S, Cube Edge that I mentioned earlier that was graduated, uh, Open Yurt is another one, was a match. So a variety of different projects that allow you to run workloads at the Edge. Uh, in 
they published a, a white paper on the similarities and differences between cloud native and uh, and non cloud native or edge type of workloads. And so they basically defining all these different uh, points where where an edge application might be different from cloud native. Uh, there's a white paper that is published. Uh, to take a look and feel free to um, uh, participate or, or if you have any suggestions. Uh, and, and this is just an example of another white paper that they published in, in terms of behaviors of uh, edge applications and how they interface or where they're located, whether they're located at the edge or they're located more in a cloud environment. Uh, which typically go applications that go by cloud native applications and then edge native applications are like more autonomous uh, they're more resource con constrained uh, they need to be more capable uh, of the uh, of the system that are that are, the, that are they're running on maybe they have lower power requirements uh, so yeah so so a variety of different things that are, that are that are kind of different around the edge uh, and yeah, and, and, and then they have also community meetings. Uh, if you're interested in this space, IoT, Edge, or anything related to how to run workloads um, uh, in more constrained environments, feel free to join the meetings. Um, uh, call out here to AI type of workloads too. So there's intersection with AI in, in all of these different things. So one of the things that are, is inter interesting too is how they're running inference at the Edge and then collecting a lot of data. So. Uh, this is a very interesting area that I encourage anyone to get involved in and participate. And Another working group uh, that we have is Special Purpose uh, OS Working Group. So I just wanted to point out a couple of presentations that we have there. So these are projects uh, that are all, you know, taking different approaches like to what is a Special Purpose uh, OS. And um, from that, we steered uh, also uh, in KubeCon Paris, we had a panel. And I think one of the interesting things is that uh, all of these operating system got slightly different approaches and we tried to find the commonalities and the different approaches and uh, make it more, more accessible. You don't have to be a kernel developer or actually run a kernel to have one of those. You have unikernels, you have different approaches, API-based, declarative, and so on. So we just want to spread the, the word out there and uh, find a way to um, express what are the similarities and differences. Uh, also kind of uh, work on a white paper together. And um, if you're working on a project and you want to uh, present, we have, uh, we have meetings also uh, every first Thursday of the month. Um, uh, we have also co-chairs. I'm also co-chairing uh, this one. Um, and um, also, we encourage you to participate. And again, I could not express any, uh, any, any more. You don't need to be a kernel developer to, to, be, to participate in that. Uh, so, just like we l would like to hear your pain points, if you're like you know from a user perspective, or just uh, if you're interested to know what's the differences, what's what's out there, um, the bar is not high. We want you there. We want you to be involved. So just don't be afraid of the topic, and yeah, show up in the in the meetings or in our Slack channel or wherever you want. Oh, you want to take this one? Yeah, as Daniel said, we want you to get involved. Oh, these are some of the slides that we showed for the Paris presentation as well. And this may be like a, the journey of a tag runtime contributor that may look like, but everyone's journey may differ from the other person. What happens is you usually join the tag, you attend the meetings, you help in reaching out to projects, and this may involve like, hey, you know, there's a new project which has come out. It's not even in CNCF. Like someone just hacked on something and it's pretty cool and kind of intersects with the runtime uh, ecosystem. Then we probably reach out to them and ask them to present at one of our meetings and see, you know, whether it lies in the cloud native area, whether that project can stand on its own feet, or maybe we can collaborate with some of the Kubernetes sub-projects, or maybe it can collaborate with one of the tag runtime existing projects, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty technical, it's pretty um, 
brainstorming kind of a session and it also helps the project in kind of go through their roadmap. It also helps us to see what's happening in the ecosystem and suggest a thing or two to, to these projects. And eventually you may find a help a working group around or you may help in contributing to white papers that the uh, technical advisory group comes up with. Then this leads you to uh, starting the initiatives and these initiatives may be helping with the tag on time booth at KubeCon or helping start a new working group or helping get a white paper published. So, you know, there are multiple um, areas where one can contribute and then eventually uh, once you show up, help in contributing with, with the tag, you can be one of the coaches or one of the tech leads. Like the Stephen, I think we met at KubeCon Chicago and he ended up at one of these meetings and then eventually by KubeCon Paris, he was one of the co-chairs for Tag Runtime. So kudos to you, Stephen. You've been amazing with uh, this tag. Okay. So at, at this point, I mean, uh, yeah, to hey. Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the real answer is just get involved and show up and there's no barrier to entry. Just contribute at your comfort level and you know, you, you can contribute where it makes sense. And Hey, I'm a PM, I'm, I'm involved. You don't necessarily even to be a developer to do that. Exactly, yep. So at, at this point, we wanted to keep it slightly more interactive, get the audience in, see what, you, what questions you have in mind, but uh, we can probably have the screen around, right? Like this is where you can find us out. Um, but yeah, we can, I think we can open up for questions now. Sure, yeah, if there's any questions. Not all at once, please. We want you. <laughs> <laughs> So the question was uh, where you can find all, the, all of the tags. So you can scan this QR code, actually. Any other questions on getting involved? Any specific aspect of tag runtime? So on. Yep. Uh, what is, in your opinion, what are the things slowing tag runtime down? And what, are, what is that you need to accelerate faster as a group? Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, in my opinion, one of the things that we've been talking about is a lot of process items that are coming in in terms of tag runtime-ish or tag generic to all the tags. So that may be one of the things. Ricardo, you want to take it? Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, people are excited about technology, in my opinion. So we are all engineers at heart. I mean, there's different specialties and folks working in different organizations. But uh, I think we all like technology. So it, if we can gather the community around people who are super interested in technology and drive more interest, right? That, uh, folks can, can join our meetings. Uh, folks that, that can bring up new ideas, they can actually see challenges and then they can uh, propose solutions to these challenges and eventually maybe implement some of these challenges and some of these actually become open source projects right? so, and then help the ecosystem overall. Like, I mean, you're not, you're not actually helping your single company or single organization, but you, whatever you're contributing, you're making a really wide impact because this is something that can be used across the industry. So it's industry-wide impact. Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, you know, the tag runtime is, as you see, very, very broad today. So there's many working groups. Um, so I think a lot of our momentum tends towards those working groups rather than the, the core runtime, which maybe people think is this like a solved problem or not as exciting. Um, I think uh, the run, the core runtime is very exciting uh, actually. <laughs> uh, and there is a lot of new innovation uh, in that area as well. Um, and we had a project present um, that was rewrote the, um, the container runtime in Rust, for example. So that's uh, an example of uh, innovations occurring. Um, 
so yeah, I you know I think um, continue to uh, go towards the technology. That's where you're, you're going to find the interest and the best momentum is around things that you're really passionate about and interested in. So join the working groups, but also you know think of um, just the the core of the runtime as well. I guess yeah. Any other questions? All right, so is this working? Yeah. Okay, so um, you said you don't have to be a kernel developer to be part of Tag Runtime, but I imagine that a lot of the development in the Linux kernel uh, has some impacts to, to what you guys do in the Tag. Is there some kind of working relationship between the kernel development community and TAG Runtime? So I guess it falls under the um, uh, special purpose OS working group. So actually not all of them have kernels, like you have like stuff like unikernels. So I mean, seriously, you don't have to be a kernel developer. It depends on the project, like uh, I'm, I'm the PM for Flatcar. Uh, so, I um, mean, it's based on Chorus, which is based uh, on Gentoo. So, uh, one of our main maintainer, uh, one of our co-maintainer uh, is also a Gentoo. Uh, sorry, say it with a German accent. Gentoo <laughs> developer. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it depends on the project, but really to, to be active and contributing, uh, the bar is not there. That's, that's not necessarily where you need to be. But, yes, yeah, it depends on the project, so there is a connection. And we are un under the Linux Foundation. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's different, right? So some people know a little bit more about kernel development. Some folks know a little bit more higher level the stat, uh, at the stack level. So I think all of the contributions are welcome, right? So th there's, th I think there are challenges everywhere. Um, so yeah, another example is this uh, Unicraph project. They're basically uh, creating a unikernel, right? And, and, and how to run unikernels in cloud native environments. So, yeah, so the, f the folks in the project, I, I don't know the details of how they interface with the kernel community, but I'm pretty sure that there's some, some interactions there. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think to specifically answer your question, working group operating system is where you may want to hang out. <laughs> yeah, and, and just uh, again, runtime is not only the runtime, it's also like workload orchestration at the application exactly. level, task scheduling. Um, so there, there's many opportunities based on your, your knowledge or skill level or interest. Any other questions? I think we have a couple of minutes, so maybe we can take more questions as well. <laughs> Would anyone, is anyone convinced to join of any of the tag runtime meetings after what we've told y'all? <laughs> Thank you. Nice, we'll see you there. <laughs> Well, enjoy your Friday and see you at the Tag Runtime meeting. You have four more minutes for your day. Thank you. Thank you very much.